Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Peace Jones. Don't forget to like this video, to comment on this video, and to subscribe to my channel. You guys, you see, we're getting up there. We're almost to 1K. We got to make it to 1 million, all right? So let's keep going. Let's keep subscribing, sharing, liking, and commenting all right so you guys in case you are new here if you are welcome i do cover three main topics on this channel number one being travel with an emphasis on solo travel so go check out all of my solo travel vlogs number two being dating all things dating and relationships and number three being healing you guys we all have so much healing to do so much growing to do it literally never stops so let's continue to evolve develop ourselves i know i'm far from perfect i've had to do a lot of self-work and healing and i'm still working on it all right so no shame in my game let's heal together now today we are going to do a topic which i guess can kind of fall under either just a typical chit chat or it can fall under heal with me because it is five different things that i wish that parents would have told us i guess we can say things we wish that our parents would have taught us or talked about or explained a lot more in depth before we just grew up became these adults of our own and we're just out here adulting and struggling we lost we lost okay now we're honestly not struggling i know pretty much everyone around me is doing well for themselves however life is life being an adult for the first time in your life is difficult, okay? I was reading something earlier that said, don't be so hard on yourself. Look at it as you just became an official adult at 20. So every year after that, you're only an adult for that amount of years. So if you're 21, you're only a one-year-old adult. If you're 25, you're only a five-year-old adult. All right, so go easy on yourself. We definitely gotta accomplish our goals. We definitely gotta stay focused. But hey, we never been adults before. So we're figuring this out, okay? Now this is gonna be a mukbang. I have some wing stock. Ooh, I've literally never had this before, but I keep seeing people eat that corn. So I had to try it. And they also have some um, voodoo fries. So that's what I got. This is the corn. And these are the voodoo fries. Got me a little fork. And of course, I got some water because your girl is not trying to break out from this stuff, okay? So these are the voodoo fries. I forgot what's on them, but I believe they are fries with ranch and jalapeno cheese sauce. And then here's the corn. It looks literally so good. Now, I thought they were going to give me ranch to dip it in, but I guess they hate me. So it's all good. I got to try the the um corn first, you guys. Look at that. It has Cajun seasoning on it, and it's like deep fried. Pretty darn good. Definitely a little spicy. And to me, it's a little bit dry. But I guess that's to be expected after it's been deep fried. Try and get a little of this sauce on there. Pretty good. Alrighty. And let me taste the fries next the fries baby mm. these are not very good these fries kind of taste old to me it could be the cajun seasoning mixed with these cheeses that's making it taste weird but something don't taste too right. I am not impressed with this food, y'all. Mm. Luckily, it was only $8, but 
we ain't got eight dollars to waste in this recession okay so let's get into it all right five things that we wish our parents would have taught us told us or better explained to us before we came before we became adults number one how to deal with people you guys this is a huge one for me okay the way i was raised it was like you be genuine you be kind you treat people how you want to be treated that was one thing my grandmother said all the time treat people how you want to be treated treat people nicely have respect whatever but as i became an adult i realized like so many people don't think like that so many full-blown adults like even older than me they do not treat people nicely they don't treat people with respect they don't have any integrity like there's people really out here that just act like animals or worse than animals and i had a really hard time understanding that initially like in my early 20s i would literally sometimes talk to my friends and be like so and so did this or today i experienced this or my teacher said that or whatever and they'd be like yeah people aren't like you everyone isn't gonna know to do this a lot of people weren't raised to do that and that was just so crazy to me because i literally went into a world where i felt like everyone knew certain things or they had been taught certain things or they were to act a certain way and i was like dang i really wish that i knew that i was better informed on the fact that people will be people people are different a lot of people don't have a caring heart a lot of people aren't respectful a lot of people don't care about you the way that you would expect them to a lot of people don't have your best interests. A lot of people are very angry and spiteful and bitter and mean. And I think if I had understood that a little bit earlier, I would have been able to save myself from a lot of experiences that I experienced or even from just like even um, associating with certain things or people or even getting upset over certain things you know and this could be as minor as like oh i went to the bank yesterday and the teller was like getting smart with me and then she just threw my money through the um window or whatever and rolled her eyes and that type of stuff would confuse me because i would be like what the heck is going on even something that simple i feel like you know in those moments i wouldn't have gotten offended or if someone did something intentional to me I would know, okay, this person is just whatever. You know what I mean? But I feel like I got myself into a lot of like interesting debacles because I didn't understand that people were not raised to act accordingly, to act like they have some sense, to have integrity, to not get over on people, stuff like that. So i think that's one thing that a lot of people were ill-informed on was how to deal with people how to accept people how to navigate through life with different personalities that can be a really really hard thing especially in the workplace if your boss is like this one type of way and then your co-worker is this way and then your other co-worker is this way and then the director is this way and then you're this way and y'all are all trying to navigate and figure it out or even in an academic setting even in like your own entrepreneur your own business setting right even in friendships even in relationships like learning how to or knowing how to navigate and deal with people is such an important skill that i think a lot of people overlook and a lot of parents forget to kind of like teach their kid like they may teach their kid to be a good person or to be nice or to be kind and respectful but they're not closing up that other gap where it's like well hey i taught you to be like this but this is what you can expect possibly for other people to do to you and this is how you handle it you know what i mean so number two would be investing in credit investing and credit the importance of it i guess you could say oh excuse me <clears throat> i guess you can say overall finances right the reason why i didn't overall say finances is because in my case specifically 
my grandmother did teach me about money she taught me how to save things like that but she did not teach me about credit at all okay like i got to college and i think it was my junior year that i first found out about like a credit card how it works and that's when i got my first credit card and started establishing credit thank you to my old neighbor shout out to her who's like my second mom who has really taught me a lot of things schooled me on a lot of things got me hip to a lot of things, helped me with a lot of things. And I'm so glad that she did that because had I not started at that very moment, I literally wouldn't have been able to buy like my first car. I wouldn't have been able to buy my second car. I wouldn't have been able to, you know, sign up for certain things, purchase other things, build my credit. Like she literally caught me at the perfect moment. It was like, look, you need to do this so you can start establishing a line of credit so when you do go to make a big purchase or get a big loan you will have it that was so important that was something i was not taught right and i'm so grateful that i was taught at that moment before it was too late then investing so important right not that you have to do that or not that you would want to do that but it is a great tool to know how to do and even if you don't know how to invest as a parent to at least put that on your kids radar and say hey i've heard about investing i've heard about this and that please do some research on it when you become an adult you're on your own i want you to really look into it and consider it look at different ways you can invest look at the benefits the pros and cons maybe we can do it together we can take a course but this is something that i want you to know as my child because i know that it's a vital thing i know that it's an amazing thing i know that it's something that can really really help change your finances for the better so investing in credit or finances number three relationships y'all relationships look how is it that your parents will sit there and tell you day in and day out when are you getting married when you get married when your brother gets married when your sister gets married when the time comes that you're married with kids but you're gonna tell us anything about marriage the reality of it how to prepare for it what to expect in it how to be a good wife how to be a good husband y'all just throw it out there like when you get married but you're not telling us anything about the concept of marriage okay and on top of that i know a lot of parents will say at least to the females don't talk to boys don't talk to boys don't talk to boys don't have intercourse don't date you need to be focused on this and then at some certain magical age somewhere in the 20s usually or the early 30s it's well where is your husband well when are you getting married well you done told me to literally never talk to a man a day in my life but now that i'm 28 or 31 you think i'm supposed to be magically married like you literally didn't want me to even look at a man my entire life like how does that work you know so i just think that even if it's not necessarily marriage i think the parents some parents really failed in teaching children how to get into a strong healthy relationship how to be a strong healthy healed partner the importance in healing before you get into a relationship what a healthy relationship may consist of i can't say what it looks like because every relationship is different and i'm learning that a lot of conversation around what your relationship should be is just a bunch of bs because everyone's relationship is different everyone's situation is different every person in that relationship is different circumstances are different it's just there's no way to say this is what it should look like okay but what i'm saying is maybe traits or things that you should look for 
in a healthy relationship, right? And also teaching a woman, a young woman, how to be a wife, what may come with being the woman of your house, what may come with motherhood, right? The realities, not just, oh, push your baby in a baby carriage. Let's really talk about it, okay? Let's get into postpartum. Let's get into childbirth. Let's get into the changes that you're going to face mentally and physically. Let's get into the family dynamic, right? Are you planning on being a career woman as well as being a mother and a wife, right? And all these things, like, they'll come with time. You'll figure it out. I'm not saying sit your 10-year-old girl down and just be like, all right, this is how you do this and that. But I think it's a conversation that should be had once a female is, you know, around 18, 20, maybe in college, maybe before that, right? Some people may say once they hit puberty, I just think it's good to put those things out there. And the same for young men. If you want your child, your young male child to eventually be a father and a husband, let's kind of talk about what it means to be the leader of a household, what it means to be a strong masculine man, what it means to be a family man, what it means to really like work on yourself and create the lifestyle that you want. And you know, different different things that a lot of men aren't taught. How to express your feelings. It's okay to have feelings. Therapy, you know, um, talking to other men, maybe talking to the father, the uncle. Let's look at these examples of healthy marriages. Those types of things, right? I think a lot of times we are so lost on relationships. Like we literally do not know how to navigate relationships at all. And I personally think that a lot of relationships fall apart, not because the two people were so horrible for each other, but because people do not know how to navigate a relationship. We are not taught that. Like even think about friendships, whose mom has actually, or whose dad has actually sat them down and said, this is how you be a friend. These are things that you may experience in your friendship. This is how you mend them. This is how you grow through them. This is how you communicate. Like, we're not taught that. We're just, oh, Susie and Carly, they've been best friends since first grade. Oh my gosh, they broke up. They stopped being friends after 20 years. Oh, people just move on. And it's just like, that could be true. But like, can we get down to what really happened after 20 years? Like, could it be something as simple as we really need to have a talk? Somebody doesn't know how to communicate someone's feelings were hurt like same with relationships a lot of people give up really really easily because a lot of people think that relationships are built on some like magical pony block where you know you just sit on this block and things just go good and as long as you're sitting there together holding hands you'll just make it down the aisle and be married for 50 years. And they don't even realize like, no, this takes a lot of communication, a lot of dedication, a lot of commitment, choosing your partner over everyone else every day, choosing to work through things, loving one another, being compatible, continuing to date one another, listening to one another, realizing that we are two different humans and we really are growing at two different paces and that's okay you know what i mean or we have different ideas that's okay we can compromise that's okay all right so relationships all right number four would be the flow of life okay one thing i will say is after my 29 years i think i felt some flows of this lifetime okay and obviously i have a lot more to experience and see i'm a young puppy you know what i mean but I think that a lot of people kind of navigate life as a parent, right? A lot of parents navigate life as a parent. And in their mind, they look at it like, these aren't my kids' problems. I don't need to make it their problems. They don't need to know about taxes and the recession and how hard it was to pay the bills and so-and-so passed away and you're trying to get this person into school and so-and-so has special needs and this one is 
losing their dental insurance and this one has some severe illness and this one has whatever you know what i mean obviously as a parent you don't want to be exposing your children to that type of stuff because those are adult issues your kids shouldn't have to worry about someone's life insurance someone's dental insurance someone's depression and the list goes on right but i think at a certain age we should be a little bit honest about like you know the flow of life life will not always be perfect life will not always be easy and we have to prepare our children for the realities of that right and i think that's one reason why we have so many young adults today that are giving up on themselves taking their own lives because they're not understanding the flow of life you're gonna have some bad times or some rough times those times might last for a week or they might last for 10 years i'm exaggerating maybe one year right two years and you have to know how to navigate through the ups and downs the valleys the hills the slopes of life that is a skill that's so valuable that i don't think a lot of people know a lot of times you're under your mom and dad's roof for however long most of the times that's a pretty chill relaxed laid-back life a lot of kids in america they then go to college right yeah it's a little stressful because of the workload but for the most part you're having fun you're making friends whatever chill easy then you get out into the real world but a lot of people find their way quickly whether it be through connections or their own hard work they get their job cool now you start really feeling these flows okay you might feel the hardships and struggle in getting into your career career field and making the money you want to make. You may feel the adversity. You may feel the racism. You may feel the pain of losing friendships. You may have a hard breakup. The recession may come. Um, a pandemic may come. You may lose someone close to you. You may be having financial issues. All these things start to come about. And these are things that you were never used to dealing with on your own. That can spark depression, that can spark anxiety, that can spark suicidal thoughts for a lot of people. And that's what I was saying. A lot of these young kids are like taking their own lives because of events and occurrences and situations that are less than ideal. And I think we got to start telling our kids a lot of life situations are going to be less than ideal. It's difficult, but you got to maintain, you got to keep pushing, you got to pray through it, you got to stay positive, keep your close friends close, your good family close, and you'll get through it. It's not the end of the world. We have ups and downs and highs and lows, and you see that more and more as you get older. And I just wish that parents were a lot more vocal about that and honest about that number five is careers okay so last but not least careers i feel like a lot of parents depending on your age from my age a lot of parents are i'm 29 a lot of parents are baby boomers right so baby boomers pretty much had this idea like first of all they went hard okay they love to work Work was life for them. In the office, grinding, dedicating years and years to these professions. A lot of them retired from their jobs after 30, 20 years, whatever, right? These are your mom and dad and aunt and uncle that worked for the sheriff's office for 32 years and retired. Worked for this psychiatric hospital for 28 years and retired was a firefighter for 40 years and retired right and so in their mind i think some of them still think that it's that easy for us right they're like oh i paid for your schooling you went to college you better go out there be a nurse be that nurse for 35 years retire you'll be good go to florida get a vacation home give me some grandbabies woohoo life's great right but 
they fail to realize that they were raising millennials and Gen Z. <laughs> okay? First of all, millennials are hanging on by a thread to that nine to five life, okay? A lot of millennials are now entrepreneurs. A lot of millennials are now opting out of a full-time nine to five and doing their own thing half the time and maybe doing a part-time. A lot of millennials are creating the spaces that they want to work in. Gen Z, forget it. Gen Z ain't coming into your office. Gen Z ain't getting your degree. Gen Z is doing what they want, how they want, in a manner that fits them best, okay? So with that comes a lot of anxiety and a lot of concern around stability in their careers, okay? Because I know for a lot of millennials, we move around a lot, right? And we move around because we're chasing the money, we're chasing the work environment, we're chasing the stability, and we're chasing the ideal career that we want, the ideal lifestyle. That's a huge word for us, the lifestyle that we want, right? We don't want to be the parents that worked all day every day, came home, slaved over the stove, bathed all the kids, only got one vacation a year, no, we want to be the parents that, yes, we can meet our career goals. We can also go to our kids' field trips. We can also wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm teleworking this morning. On my lunch break, I'm taking my kids to get ice cream. Those type of things, right? A better, relaxed lifestyle. And I think that parents, and this isn't too much their fault, because like I said, I don't know if they really knew that this was going to be the new norm for careers for their children. But I think that parents could have been a little bit more tapped into that and then given their kids a little bit more advice on like career growth, finding what's best for you, finding the perfect fit for you, and also having some balance, right? Because I noticed that a lot of people, and I think I've talked about this a bit in my Black Girl Luxury video, you guys can check that out. I think a lot of people have this idea that like, especially because of social media, that you can just literally do nothing and live a grand life, right? Because guess what, guys? Even celebrities, as much as you see them stunting out at the club on vacation, they work hard, okay? Actors and actresses work hard. They put in long days. They're on set all the time. They're studying their lines all the time. Like, they work hard. They got to find gigs. They got to maintain their work, all that. Same with music artists. They're working hard constantly. They're trying to um, work on their vocals. They're pushing out new albums. They're trying to stay relevant, trying to stay on top. Even someone like a IG model or a YouTube personality, they got to push out that content. They're constantly doing photo shoots. They're constantly trying to get their brand deals. They're constantly trying to get themselves out there to stay relevant, to get views, all of that. So no matter what you do, you have to put in some work. You have to have a plan. You have to be consistent and you have to work hard at your craft. And I think a lot of people have this idea now that you can literally just wake up, go to Barbados and just figure it out each day from there, which you can. And maybe that would be ideal for you. But I think a lot of times, you know, especially in these two generations I speak of, people are getting really lost and they're having a lot, a lot, a lot of concern and depression around their career and their career stability and their career growth and where they're going to grow and end up being because they don't want to work the nine to five anymore, but they also don't know which route to go outside of that. Or, you know, the whole entrepreneur wave I think is kind of, kind of dying down because I think that some people are realizing that it's not for them or they can't sustain it long term. So I think a lot of people, whether they will admit it or not, are just having some questions and concerns around what they're going to do to get their money for the rest of their life, you know? So... I think that could definitely be a conversation that's had. I would say once 
you're nearing the end of high school because you're technically an adult at 18. So I think that that's something that should be talked about maybe at 16 so that you can kind of figure out, okay, am I going to trade school? Am I going to college? Is it worth me going to college? Is what I'm trying to do requiring a degree? Do I want to go into tech? Do I want to go into influencing? Do I want to become a model? What does this role look like for me? Am I really, really set on these things? Do I feel like I may change my mind? Should I maybe take a year off and just like figure some things out? And looking at the realities of it, right? Like, yeah, you can be an IG model in your 20s or maybe 30s, but what does that look like after that? Are you then trying to get into acting? Are you then trying to get into... I don't know, selling clothes, like opening your own boutique, open, opening a restaurant, like what comes after that? Because a lot of these career ideas I'm finding for a lot of people are very short term. It's like, oh, I'm just going to go do this and not realizing that's something that, yeah, it may be okay for about five years, three years, but then what's your plan after that? And that's when people are getting stuck. That's when people are going broke. That's when people are really at this like, stump where they don't know how to go forward after that and even for people with nine to fives like myself climbing the corporate ladder can be so so intimidating intense difficult grueling and although I am doing well for myself and although I know a lot of people that are it is a process. It takes dedication. It takes hard work. You always got to be working on yourself, gaining new skills, selling yourself. And so, you know, parents should talk to their kids about that. They should let them know, like, no, you're not going to come out of undergrad and be a director. Unless granddaddy has that pull. But for a lot of us minorities, granddaddy ain't got no pull, okay? So... Um, we need to talk about those real life things surrounding careers, career go career growth, and finding yourself stability as far as your finances. All right. So that is all five of my things that I wish parents would have told us about or harped on more when we were younger so that we won't be out here adulting and trying to figure out all this stuff on our own. Okay. No shade to the parents, though, because I know at the end of the day, parents have a lot of responsibility on them, especially single parents, even not single parents. Like it takes a lot to take care of yourself, take care of your kids, take care of your household, still go to work. So it's no shame. But these are just things that if you are a parent, you should consider talking to your child about. And if you are a child of a parent, you can maybe say, hey, I wish I would have known this. You know what I mean? All right, that's it, you guys. About to finish this dry corn. These fries are about to go in the trash. <laughs> but I'll see you guys next time. Peace.